نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we uh, started Surah An-Nas last time and we went through first three ayahs so um, I'm gonna ask all of you to unmute yourself and just tell me the meaning of these ayahs. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kul a'uzu bi rabbin nas. What does it mean? Hold on, wait, I'm gonna go get my book. It's beside me. Okay, she's? Uh, say I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind. Awesome. By the way, your sister is here, she's? No, she doesn't do it anymore. I don't know why. I tried to convince her, but I think she has schools, like school assignments to do. Okay. Okay. No worries, inshallah. Malikin Nas. Owner of mankind. Cool. Good job. Ilahin Nas. God of mankind. Malikin Nas is also king. Not that okay. So the meaning we do here is king of people, king of mankind. Ilahin Nas, God of people. Okay, so in these three ayahs, we simply invoked, we called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we asked, but we haven't really asked anything yet. We simply asked Allah for protection, but protection from what? We haven't asked yet. So inshallah, today let's start that. Okay, min. Min means from. Share. What does the word share mean? Evil. 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 Good job. Waswas. This is a new word. Of the whispers. of the whisperer. Khanas. Khanas means the one who withdraws. The entire ayah will mean from the evil of the whisperer who Okay, so from the evil of the whisperer, whisperer means we know that what whisperer means, right? Somebody who is whispering in your ear. Okay, what does that mean? The one who withdraws? Any idea who is this? Who whispers and then withdraws and then whispers and then withdraws? Is it Shaitan? That's shaitan. That's right. How is that shaitan? Because like he's like a little voice in your mind that tells you to do like bad stuff. Hmm. Exactly. And let's go to the next ayah and we're going to combine this together and then discuss it. Allazi. Did we do the word Allazi before?
Allazi means the one who. Yuvaswisu. If you see, it's kind of a similar one. Waswas, Yuvaswisu. Since the word looks similar, it should have similar meaning, right? Yuvaswisu means whispers. The one who whispers. Fi in. Sudur means hearts. Sadar means heart. Sudur is the plural, which means hearts. And nas, we know what it means, right? Mm. Samaya, and nas mean? Um, of mankind. Mankind, or we can say, yeah, people. Mankind, human beings, people, all of them would work. Let's do the complete meaning. The one who whispers in the The one who whispers in the hearts or chest of the people. One thing that I want you to do, maybe whenever you have a little bit of time, maybe today or tomorrow, uh, most of you do have a summer break, so I think you might have some time. There are different words for the word heart. There are words like Kalb. Kalb is a word for heart in Arabic. Then that's another word, Sadr. There's another word, Fuad. I want you to find a difference between at least these two words. What is the difference between Kalb and Sadr? Yes, Zara? Since we just finished this one, um, are we done this month, this surah? Uh, like inshallah, we'll be done it? with this surah. Yes, today uh, like, we will do the last ayah and then we'll be done with the surah. Okay, you're not going to move on to our next one? Yes, tomorrow we'll go to the next one. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, she's? I have a question. Doesn't kalb mean a dog in Arabic? Good question. There's a word. Kalp. Take it. Never mind. Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and forgot the, how it looked like. They look similar. That's the, yes, and that's the word kalp. And that's exactly why that's a good point that you actually brought, Cheese. That's exactly why we put so much emphasis on reading the words correctly, because look at how much difference it is. This word kalb means a dog. This word kalb means heart. Similarly, one more, kul. The word kul that we use so many times now means what? Inaya, kul means say say good job the word kul with a kaf means what eat 
See the difference? Kul means say and kul means eat. So you're asking somebody to say, say something when you say kul and you're asking somebody to eat when you say kul. So that's why we have emphasis on reading the words properly. So we know exactly what we mean. Okay, good, cool. Okay, so as I was saying that I want you to just a little assignment for you all. And when you come tomorrow, I would like at least a few of you to give me the answer that what is the difference between these words for that we are used for heart, uh, which is kalb, sadr, and fuad. These are the three words that I can just right now remember on top of my head, especially between kalb and sadr. Kalb, the plural is kulub. Sadr, the plural is sudur, which is used right here. Okay. Okay, next aya. Min. Min means from. Jinnati. The jinn. One nas. And the people. So the full translation will be from the jinn and the people. Simple. Okay. Okay, let's go back here. The ayah that we started with. So we ask Allah for protection. I think I said last time that this, uh, in the previous surah, Surah Falak, we asked Allah for protection from things that are outside of us, from our, our inner self, like, you know, some dangerous animals, things that happen at nighttime that might pose some danger. Magicians, those things are outside us. In this surah, we talk about things that are kind of inside of us because what shaitan does is shaitan whispers, whispers on our hearts, on our chests. And the reason why the word al-khannas means, it's, it means like does it repeatedly, does not really, shaitan does not lose hope. He's going to withdraw and come back and then withdraw and then come back. So one time, Shaitan is going to whisper into your chest, into your ear, come on, let's do that. And then you don't do it. But Shaitan is not going to lose hope. Okay, you did not do it this time. I'm going to come back again and again and again. It's going to keep coming back until you end up doing that thing. Remember, we talked about the feeling of hasad uh, in the end of last surah. So hasad is something, you know, we, last surah we asked protection from somebody who's having evil thoughts about us. Where does those evil thoughts come from? The evil thoughts come from that same whisper of shaitan. So when those evil thoughts of uh, jealousy and um, envy, these things come to us, it's from shaitan. Shaitan tries to misguide us. Shaitan tries to make us think, oh, that person is better than you. That person is winning the competition. That person is doing this and that. And we end up getting jealous. Then we end up getting jealous. Then Shaitan starts another thing that makes us do something bad about for that person. They're like, you know, Shaitan is with us like 24 seven. It's for every good deed, the shaitan's job is to stop us and try to have us do bad stuff throughout the day, like all the time. So like if there is so much going on, you see like, you know, shaitan is, it says shaitan attacks from the front, from the back, from the left and from the right. So how, how, how can we save ourselves? Isn't that so difficult? 
it's shaitan's fault right not my fault if i don't do good deeds is there any way out can we do something about it mahnoor we can resist by doing the thing that shaitan's trying to tell you to do like you can not do it okay yes that's right how do we know that this is from shaitan do we know it rohan no we are not able we to know it know what we are not able to know it whether this is from shaitan or what well yeah usually we don't know if it's from shaitan or if it's from our own mind so usually if something evil or something bad is coming to your mind that you really want to do and you really 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 you know you can't stop yourself from doing you have a urge of doing things that are not good and you know it that they are not good then there those are definitely from shaitan and of course shaitan sometimes corrupts us so much that eventually our own self starts you know we just get into a habit of doing bad bad thing that's kind of a victory of shaitan because he has now done enough damage that now shaitan does not even need to do it like for example the month of ramadan we say the shaitan is locked but people don't do bad deeds in in the month of ramadan people do they still do right the reason is that shaitan has already done enough damage you know it it's like you know things have been already programmed you know you you just write down a code and program and you run it you don't have to keep writing it again and again it just runs so shaitan does the job before going into the lockdown that's why we we keep on doing those bad stuff but yeah yes zara i'm not trying to say this is, i'm not i'm not taking like shaitan side but i'm just going to say that that's actually smart though <laughs> yes so if uh, you know that shaitan was one of the most i would say hard working and most you know dedicated worshipper of allah subhanahu wa taala at one time yeah, we can talk a lot about shaitan but you know what is one thing that brought shaitan down what was one mistake that shaitan made um not were um not bowing down to prophet adam alayhis salam yes that's right and what so i, I mean allah is not that is allah so harsh that just because he said i don't want to bow, bow down allah would just you know ban him what was the main reason that he he was banned yes rohan um like he so his like pride he thought that he was like better to be really like pride very nice one okay okay let me let me write down okay you said that you said that shaitan thought that he is better hai na right okay yes she's jealousy since he was a uh, jealous on how a person made out of sand is superior superior than a person made out of fire i'm pretty sure that's right okay anything else zara zara was saying something yeah um basically a uh, shaitan thought that since he was even better than um prophet lahir salam since he was made out of fire and mm -hmm. um like he's like the first ever human being he thought he was like better and that he didn't need to bow down just because he was like even better and more special kind of like in this of what Rah rahan and she said Yes. So, in other words, if I want to say to your point, um, uh, Zara, is that he was too proud. 
Yeah, he was too proud of himself. He was too proud, right? Yeah. So these things, imagine how, where these things can take us. Being proud, having pride in our hearts and being jealous. And let me, uh, you know, you will be able to understand if you compare the mistakes of these two Allah's creations, which is Shaitan and Adam alayhi salam. Okay, one mistake Shaitan made. What was that mistake? Refusing to bow down, right? That was Shaitan's mistake. One mistake Adam alayhi salam also made. What was that mistake? Um, can I say it? Yeah, sure. Um, I have two. Um, is it because um, the first one is that he refused to bow down to Prophet Adam, and the second one is that he told Prophet Adam Salam and his wife Eve mm -hmm. um, to eat the forbidden fruit and from the, the fruit. forbidden tree? Yes. So after that, Shaitan just got on a mission to, you know, to just bring the humans down. What was the mistake that you just almost said it? What's the mistake that Adam alayhi salam made? Believing him and doing what he said. Eating the fruit. That's right. Eating the fruit. Eating the fruit. That's the mistake. What is the difference between the, the reaction of both Shaitan and Adam alayhi salam? Just let's compare them. What did Shaitan do when Allah told Shaitan that you made a mistake? What did Shaitan do? Yes, Zara? Um, well, I think he felt proud and he wanted to go on a mission to bring down all humans to prove that he was better than them. He was better, that's right. And what did Adam, Adam al Islam told, do? Um, he, he asked for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, uh -huh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them, but uh -huh. he still got kicked out and had to go down to earth. That's right. He got, I wouldn't say he was kicked out exactly because, you know, when Allah banned, subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you, then there is no punishment after forgiveness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. And uh, it's a very beautiful dua that Adam alayhi salam made when he made a mistake. You know, everyone is prone to mistakes. People do make mistakes. But the difference between a shaitan and the human was that shaitan was adamant on its mistake. I did it and I'm going to do it again. That's what the attitude was. What was the attitude of Adam alayhi salam? My mistake. I did wrong. I am sorry. I will never do it again. That is the attitude that Allah loves. Making mistake is not a problem, but sticking to it and being adamant on it is a problem. And that's what shaitan did. And that's exactly what the nature of shaitan is. And that's what shaitan is doing here. Shaitan is adamant. Shaitan keeps on trying until people make mistake. Now, I had like an, uh, uh, a few more questions I asked that how do we know that this is something bad that shaitan wants us to do? Why? Maybe it's, it's not. Maybe it's something good. Yes, Zara? Um, it's kind of about common sense. And um, it's different for little kids and older like mm -hmm. and stuff for little kids um they would still do it because they don't know what's good or bad because mm -hmm. they don't really think about it mm -hmm. for like older people like older kids or maybe grown-ups mm -hmm. and teenagers they know it's bad and it's from trade on because they wouldn't normally do it and it's like it they, the, the, the the thing in the mind that comes to their mind it's like yes. something wrong that no one else would really do yes that's very good and uh, let me tell you that there are basically two things one what you said, this is, these are the things that people are born with, a sense of right and wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that to us. This is right and this is wrong. Nobody would you know, tell people when you grow up, it's not necessary that somebody will explicitly tell you that, oh, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Everybody knows this is wrong. But believe me, there are things even adults don't know whether they are right or wrong. Then what do we do? The answer lies to our first surah that we did, Surah Fatiha. When we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ihdina sirat al mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. We don't know what is right or what is wrong. We might make mistake. We don't know if this whisper that's coming, whether it's from 
shaitan or not we don't know so allah please guide us so even as grown ups we do fall into this category where we don't know whether this is right or wrong whether we're doing something wrong or right like there are like so many decisions people make related to their jobs their education their financial stuff and yes we do come to a point where we don't know whether we are doing right or wrong what if shaitan is telling us to do this at that time we make dua we ask allah subhanahu wa taala and remember one thing no matter how powerful shaitan's whispers are shaitan really does not have any control on us he can't make us do anything he can simply try he can encourage but he cannot make us do stuff if we end up doing what shaitan wants us to do then who's responsible just like adam alayhi salam us me i did it us shaitan Adam alayhi salam did not blame uh, shaitan did adam did adam alayhi salam blame shaitan he did not no he did not blame shaitan at all although it was shaitan who uh, whispered and it was shaitan who actually told him go eat that fruit but when he said sorry to allah subhanahu wa taala he did not even say it once that it was shaitan who did it you know just like kids they say it he did it No, Adam Al Islam said, "No, I did it. My mistake." Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, I am sorry. My mistake. I should not have done it. So that's what we are responsible of our own actions. Shaitan cannot force us. It can only encourage us. You know, try to make that thing very beautiful for us, so we can we end up doing it. And then also another point to remember is. Allah is more powerful than shaitan. Shaitan is not more powerful than Allah. So shaitan cannot make us do bad stuff. If we make dua to Allah that Allah please save us from shaitan like this dua right now, Allah will save us. Yes Zara? First of all, um for the Adam alayhi salam thing, it's actually Shaitan and his fault. We Shaitan told him to, but didn't force him to. But um, Adam alayhi salam did it. He did uh-huh. it because like he could have just not ignored him, but he did it. He and did it. That's all, right. Yeah. And second of all, um, uh-huh. what was I gonna say? It was on the tip <laughs> of my tongue. Uh, wait, what were you just talking about right now? I think it was related to that. Yes. So that's what I said. That yes, it is. Shaitan cannot force us. to do bad shaitan oh, yeah. can uh, yeah, i remember whisper. that yeah so shaitan um, yeah. can whisper shaitan can make that can I encourage remember what i was going to say but i was going to say um that shaitan is less powerful allah is more power than mm. the shaitan because um allah created shaitan absolutely absolutely so if we make dua to allah to save us from shaitan's tactics allah will so our job is to make dua and stay away do not just have too much confidence on your own self keep making dua that allah will save us there is one more point but we have less in time uh, so maybe we can discuss that tomorrow is what is the criteria for shaitan to attack people so tomorrow inshallah i would like to listen to your answers to my question and also i'm going to answer this question that i just said that who shaitan attacks more that's we're going to talk about theek okay? hai so just keep in mind those two questions and inshallah i'm going to see you tomorrow i know so, the answer to the second one okay inshallah we'll discuss that tomorrow theek okay? hai subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i think i already answered in this class kind of okay